Hello, everyone. I'm Jeff Sass. I'm the CMO of Dot Art Registry. And on behalf of Ovi and the entire Dot Art team, it's my pleasure to welcome you to our February edition of the Meet the Dot Artists webinar. Today, we have a terrific panel of artist residencies and artists and a wonderful host who I'll introduce in just a moment. I just want to mention again that uh, when you support Dot Art, you are also supporting the art therapy initiative. So we take a portion of our revenue and use that to support the art therapy initiative. It's our goal to spread awareness and access to the healing powers of art. So when you're supporting that art, you're supporting this important mission. So thank you very much for that. Now it's my pleasure to introduce our moderator and host for today, Daria Kravchik. Daria is a curator. She's a cultural producer, an art journalist. She has over 10 years of experience working globally with artists, galleries, museums, art fairs, private collections, and even brand collaborations. And Daria has been actually a very important collaborator with the Dot Art team since 2018. She's worked with us on many international projects and collaborations, and you may have seen her byline as a regular writer on the Dot Art blog. So it's my pleasure to introduce Daria, who will be our host today. Thank you, Daria, welcome. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, so um, let's delve uh, into why residency, artist residency programs are so crucial for artists, shall we? Um, imagine you're an artist, deeply immersed in your studio practice, but feeling the weight of routine stifling your creativity. That's where artist residency programs step in. Um, residency programs uh, serve as sanctuaries, providing artists with the space and time they need in order to escape the daily routine and devote themselves fully in their practice. Whether nestled in some sort of a rustic uh, retreat or urban surroundings, these programs offer supportive environment, which is absolutely necessary for artistic exploration. And also the change of scenery can inspire new perspectives, idea, ideas, and approaches. Uh, yet beyond the physical setting, residency programs foster vibrant communities of artists. Picture this, you're surrounded uh, by a diverse cohort of creatives, each offering a unique perspective and skill set. And artist residences really, they become places for collaboration, for the exchange of ideas, and also lifelong uh, connections on the more human level. Um, and of course, exposure to different cultures and landscapes can expand artistic vision at large. Um, moreover, uh, artist residences often grant access to specialized uh, facilities and equipment, also mentorship, you know, like all these uh, possibilities that uh, otherwise artists might not have access to. Um, so it's really a possibility to push the boundaries and to realize numerous uh, ambitious projects. Um, yeah. So, however, the true essence of residency programs lies in the freedom uh, which they provide to artists to experiment, to take some risks, and also to feel, uh, you know, freed from the constraints of daily uh, life. Um, also, it, it's possible to embrace this creativity without uh, some sort of, you know, judgment or um, fear. Um, so, in general, I would say that artist residency programs, they are truly enriching the cultural landscape. And from what I have personally witnessed uh, during the last couple of years after the pandemic, artist residencies uh, have multiplied and emerged as a very powerful tool uh, in the art world. So they focus on building cultural bridges via international exchange programs. They do help to explore the local histories and heritage in order to breathe new life in local traditional art, sometimes also in crafts. And they encourage artists to dive into the local art community. Also, they inspire artists to research the context of the place and to create site-specific projects. Um, and of course, adding every um, new residency to your CV and portfolio is, is amazing. Um, so um, right now I would like to share my screen if possible. Thank you. Just a sec.
Okay, hope hope it's visible. Just a second, sorry. Uh, yes, my apologies for a small technical error. Okay, uh, so what I wanted to talk about is uh, several residencies I was personally engaged in because obviously artist res like residency programs, they exist not only for artists, but also for curators. Um, so uh, back in 2013, I went to my first residency program. It was taking place in Vienna, in Austria. And it was the moment when I was working on a project with uh, Austrian artist Rainer Prohaska. So it really um, helped me to dive in into the local uh, Austrian scene of art and then also to um, be in a very secure and a calm and beautiful place in the Schloss Lauden, it's 14th district in Vienna, so it's a little bit far from the everyday bus of the uh, capital. Um, and one of uh, the recent uh, residences I went to, it was in uh, Tel Aviv in Israel, and uh, Artport, actually, it's one of our doctors. Uh, the website is artport.art. Uh, so they um, help both international and uh, local artists and curators a lot. And it was an amazing experience of how to dive into the uh, scene of uh, Israeli art. And uh, also we had, uh, you know, weekly meetings, etc. So it was very involving, very active. Um, but apart from being in residencies, um, I'm also consulting residencies. So one of them is uh, Ria Kiburia Artist Residency Program located in Tbilisi in Georgia. Um, it's supported by the Ria Kiburia Foundation, which was founded back in 2018. And um, talking about the structure of the residency, uh, it has uh, several possibilities to enter it. So um, First one is just a self-supported uh, open call, which is uh, which can be you know applied on uh, any moment of the year, um, and then some of the open calls they are supported by NGOs and organizations like, for example, Artists at Risk program, and the direction which I was personally um, developing it is uh, International Exchange Residency program, uh, which is focused specifically on the Georgian artists, so. Here we can see the map of um, uh, uh, of the residencies. Uh, so uh, Georgian artists already went to France, to Austria, to Latvia. Currently, one is in uh, Egypt, and the next one is heading to uh, Milan in April, and then to Portugal. So just a little run through this amazing places. It was a little bit uh, difficult to even choose the images uh, for this wonderful locations because context play such a pivotal role here. But uh, the one in France, uh, it's located in the castle and it has plenty of um, um, information to offer. Um, also for our, those artists specifically who are interested in working with local context. Um, so next one was in Vienna, where uh, the wonderful team of MQ21, it's a museum quartier, so it's very center, uh, the very center of Vienna. Uh, it offered Georgian artists a possibility also to um, make a small exhibition, uh, which was, of course, wonderful for the portfolio. Um, the one in Cairo is located in incredible context of the Garden City. Uh, and they help uh, artists to uh, work a lot with local artisans, so really to study the crafts and heritage. And uh, yes, we are always trying to um, choose also the right timing of the residency. I think it's also a crucial point. So the residency in Milan will be in April, which is the best month um, due to the fact that both Salon del Mobile and Art Week are taking place at that moment. So this is my small presentation, and um, now I would like to um, 
uh, introduce uh, our first speaker, uh, Valeria Diaz Granada, the founder of La Boulangerie. So um, La, Bou La Boulangerie used to be um, a bakery from the uh, early 20th century, and it's located in this beautiful Art Nouveau building in the center of Paris. And now it provides a, a platform for artists uh, who would like to dive into the local art scene. So let's uh, welcome Valeria. Hello, Daria. Um, thank you very much for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be presenting the Boulangerie, which is a very unique and very different model from all the residences that one may know. So I will, first of all, present you what we do. Um, here we have a presentation. One second, yes. So this is the facade of La Boulangerie. La Boulangerie was formerly a bakery from the 19th century, uh, which is listed as a patrimoine historique. So everything that you see in the space, like the facade, um, or the ceilings, or the floors, or the mirrors, they are, uh, well, they have a historical background, let's say. Then uh, when I discovered this space and I started to transform it into a, an art platform, um, it was very important for me to offer actually two things. One is uh, an exhibition space where I invite artists and curators to do exhibitions, but also to do presentations, to share ideas, to do talks. And also we are offering a residency program so at the back of uh, the boulangerie, we have a fully equipped apartment where artists can stay. The residencies, they are for, it depends on the needs of the curator or the artist, but they can vary from, I don't know, one month to two months. So this photo that you see here in the beginning, you will see the ceiling that covers all, I mean, all the upper part of one of the rooms. And then in this, in the second photo here, you will have an idea of the residency. So we launched the Boulangerie uh, a year ago. So we are very new. It's a very unique model. It's very particular, very specific. Uh, until now, we've welcomed more than 10 artists, which is uh, quite a lot for a young, um, for a young uh, program like ours. And uh, we're very happy because we have welcome artists from all over the world. Um, we've noticed that the majority of the time, um, we are the first ones showing their work in Paris. Paris has, is now one of the most important cities for contemporary art. Uh, the ecosystem is super rich and we have the fortune to have a strong presence of institutions, collectors, curators, artists, and all of the actors that say of the art world. So having a presence in Paris for us was extremely important to be able to offer to the artists we are supporting all of these connections and hopefully future projects and future developments for their art and their careers. Mm -hmm. So, to show you, for example, uh, some of the things that we do, apart from doing these exhibitions and the residencies, how can we activate the space, it's also quite challenging, especially if you're starting, uh, is that we do, I mean, of course, several types of promotion. One of them is, of course, organizing uh, vernissage, organizing dinners, uh, organizing talks, we are inviting also uh, schools or universities to come and visit us. So to actually share uh, new models of working with young artists to the younger scene of our professionals. What we are building now, it's a community. We, have, uh, we are actually extremely happy because the audiences that come to the Boulangerie are of course very young artists, but also established artists are visiting the space. We have the presence of museum directors. We have the presence of 
curators, collectors, general public, and a very different type of audience that is not necessarily related to the art world, that is very curious to see um, art in a boulangerie. So the boulangerie kind of is a door opener for other type of audiences because it's a space that sounds familiar, especially for all the Parisians. And we're very happy that we can actually create uh, these different discourses between different audiences. Uh, that helps us to build a fantastic community that keeps growing and that becomes every time uh, more international and that opens doors as well in different places. So, for example, now after one year, La Boulangerie has decided to expand, let's say, and to create a new project called La Boulangerie Offsite, which will be a partnership with plenty bakeries in Paris. And uh, we are actually showing artists in several locations, uh, young artists, and connecting also very two different spaces and different types of, of, of people. Um, what is very nice actually is that this initiative has created a lot of interest from curators and artists abroad. And now we have, for example, curators from Hong Kong, curators from Milan, curators from New York, who want to be part of the initiative and to be part of the community and to start curating shows or proposing or showing art or artists in the bakeries locally in the different cities. So that's a bit the presentation of what we do. I'm very happy to, to share uh, everything with you. Uh, please follow us on Instagram at laboulangerie.art so you don't, be, don't miss the exhibitions and the upcoming shows we have. Thank you so much. Such an inspiring presentation. I, I had a question which is related to the selection process. So how does it happen? Like, do you have some sort of open calls or it's also invitation, combination of things? So if you could um, give us a bit more details. So our space is so specific and so unique that we don't want to do open calls. What we do is mainly by invitation. Um, the artist needs to, you know, relate to the space. The space is very charged in terms of history and it needs to be something that resonates uh, with the boulanger. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank so you. that's mainly the, um, the selection Yes, yes, I can imagine. And then, uh, I mean, obviously you're working with such a specific context and I can imagine it can be very challenging. So um, how do you cope with it? Like, how do you use it to your best possible benefit? I mean, our best possible benefit will always be to support the artist. If the artist is happy, if we're actually opening some doors, if we are helping them to do an exhibition abroad or uh, uh, an article in, a, in an important magazine, a relationship with a, with a new curator or with another artist, I think that's where, what our goal is. It's actually to, to really be door openers, to support, to accompany them and to help them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, um, thank you so much. Uh, so uh, let me introduce the next speaker. Uh, it's uh, Lesia Belanenko, uh, the project director of Anfitrion in Marbella in Spain. Um, Anfitrion is a boutique establishment uh, which is dedicated to showcasing the very essence of Spanish art. So welcome. Thank you, Lesia. Daria. Thank you, Daria. Well, first of all, I'm absolutely astonished by Boulangerie. Uh, meanwhile, they're bringing international artists to the local community. What we're doing is quite the opposite. We take the international community towards the local artists. Initially, I should admit, we're the brand new residency. We're just having our first two residents, so we have lots to learn. But initially, uh, the, the whole project was inspired by our love for uh, for art and love for art collectors. 
both for from the management and from the investors. Initially, we were just a hospitality project, but when we reformed, we decided to bring added value to Marbella. Those who know a little bit about the spot, they know the reputation and the art um, demand that is kind of not satisfied on the spot. So when we decided to open a boutique hotel, we decided to bring the culture within the doors. But instead of uh, just creating a, an exposition area, we decided to bring the art and fuse it with the, all the spaces. And uh, the cherry on top is the artistic residence that we allow ourselves to have during the low season. So the thing is that our artists uh, are um, coming to a place where they literally can meet people from all over the world who travel to Marbella, to, who travel to Spain, and who are looking forward to discover the contemporary culture. So what I'm going to do now is to share my presentation with your permission. Thank you. So I'm going to show you some spaces and and go on. You don't have to read the text. I I, uh, I will just show you some pictures of how we're enjoying uh, our our artistic residence, both the management and the artists. Uh, so this is more or less the interior of one of the suits. Our our artists come directly as if they were guests of our hotel. So they have their luxury suits next to Puerto Banús, very close to the sea where they can literally meet our guests. So our mission is just to create a safe space where both artists and guests can rest and also communicate between each other, creating human connections and engage into inspiring dialogues, having some glass of wine, explaining the artistic process, et cetera, et cetera. My, many of our guests, when they found out that, find out that we've got artists living next door, they're very eager to meet them, to see the creation process. And I can see that art literally connects souls, which makes me absolutely excited about it, because uh, for, apart from promoting art, we also want to promote Spanish culture. But way further from the established uh, ideas of the Spanish culture, we want people underst uh, to understand about mm, literally nowadays cultural, social, um, social um, things that are happening uh, in the country. And I believe that artists are the best ambassadors of culture of the country, especially if we're talking about the cult uh, screenshot of a cultural, uh, social cultural situation in the country nowadays. Uh, so uh, what we take, what we, what we give to the artists is the possibility to escape from the city, from the distractions, from, uh, and uh, submerge into a very serene space where they literally can create, getting inspired by the space, by the sea, by the light, and uh, also try to erase the borders between the collectors and the artists, because normally our guests are well-being people who travel all around the world and who are very peculiar about our their art selection and they're very curious about the, uh, the Spanish art because literally they don't have much access uh, thanks to many Spanish galleries who do participate in international fairs and some some very well established artists they do have an understanding but those who are emerging are not well known and they get absolutely excited about what they see uh, so what we do is just bring together the artists and the collector, uh, collectors in uh, in a very serene dialogue. Uh, so what we, sorry, I'm trying to, so we all invite our artists uh, to be open and share their inspirations with the guests. Uh, well, as I mentioned, we are in a very serene, beautiful place. The Andalusian light is amazing and very inspiring. I'm, I'm absolutely sure that Alan, the artist we're gonna speak later, will explain how it influences his color palette and his inspiration. And also we invite uh, our artists to be cultural ambassadors of Spain because actually what they do is broaden the mind of people who come to Spain with certain idea about Spanish culture and just improve it and open it in a better way. Um, so apart from uh, just painting and inspiring and interacting with our guests, we invite our artists to enjoy their vacation mode so more than once we went to uh, to fish uh, with Alan. We had some wines together. We we are having a very playful atmosphere. Our, our our artists are invited to be very open in their way of expression, not through artistically, but also uh, also in a very natural way in a human relations. And um, 
this is also brings very different dialogue with the guests. Uh, I'm going to share the content picture. Meanwhile, I'm going on uh, sharing uh, the, the things. So initially, what we really bring for the artists, apart from this serene space where they can create on one hand on, and on the other hand, uh, meet international people coming from Saudi Arabia, England, Germany, London, uh, well, all the Britain, Ireland, well, any parts of the world, is even Curaçao. So you can literally study geography by, uh, by the means of meeting our guests. Uh, it's also important to mention that um, we invite them to, to broaden their mind, uh, to, to communicate and share their experiences, because some, uh, sometimes we have several artists uh, overlapping their residences. So yesterday, for example, I was witnessing a very nice cultural exchange between two artists who were sharing their ideas on pigments, on materials, on expression. We were, we were having a very nice conversation on whether social media is a good platform for selling, etc. So we, we also inspire the dialogue between uh, different professionals who can learn from each other and uh, also create certain space where local community can also come. We're not just open for those who come from abroad, we're also open for the locals who are lingering for finding some arts uh, within Marbella, uh, not just uh, thanks to the beautiful galleries we have here, but also meeting the artists, creating it on spot, uh, having different kind of conversation with them, because meeting them personally literally breaks the ice and makes them way more inspired to invest, to support. Um, adding to that, we are working now, we are negotiating now with the town hall, the possibility of uh, getting some help uh, for, the, uh, for the residency because they really get excited. We are the first artistic uh, residency in Marbella and they are absolutely grateful for us to bring this and promoting Spanish culture through our hospitality project. And we were, we are very much open to different artists, but always provided they uh, represent Spanish culture and speak English because obviously interaction with the foreigners uh, uh, demands a pretty good level of English. Thank you, Lesia. Such a beautiful establishment you have. And I can imagine it's, well, it might be also challenging because like uh, you have to manage so many things simultaneously and also meet certain expectations of such a broad audience. So I'm just wondering, because you were mentioning that uh, it's really a meeting point for your guests and for the artists, do you also work on creating like a public program, um, maybe with some lectures, I don't know, performances, etc., or maybe it's something uh, in, in, in the planning? We do have it in the planning. Once again, we just started. We've been running on uh, this residency for um, slightly over two months. We do have plans of uh, creating a space that might be a club with a subscription uh, mm -hmm. where people could come for cultural conversations with both arts, art collectors, uh, art creators. Uh, we try to invite journalists, whatever promotion within Spain or abroad we make, we also include the artistic part. So every time I travel around talking about a project, I always mention this and, they, and uh, people get really interested in that part of our thing. So yeah, we're trying to create a very nice promotion on spot and abroad. But what my dream is, is to create a safe spot, safe community, maybe even create something like club wise, here for those who come here and those who live here because the expert community of Marbella is changing drastically after the pandemic and I can see the thirst and the, ang uh, the hunger for cultural life which still Marbella is struggling to produce for those who are coming with different expectations. Mm -hmm. Well thank you so much and seems like you're moving forward so fast within two months a lot accomplished. Um, uh, so uh, let's move to the next uh, speaker, a painter from Barcelona, actually a resident of Anfitrion, Alan Saster. Uh, Hi, Alan. Hi, Daria, how are you? So, yeah, I'm the first um, resident uh, here in, the, in this um, Anfitrion um, um, artist residency 
And I'm quite happy to be here, to be honest, because I'm normally based in London and the weather here is fantastic. So I got a beautiful light and beautiful weather and I'm super pleased to be here. I've been here for already like a couple of months and just, well, I mean, super pleased. So yeah, it's quite positive to do artist residencies. So fantastic. Um, I don't know, I think I'm gonna share some pictures about the studio and the things that I'm doing here. Yes, okay. please, tell us more about uh, it. Let's see. Uh, is it visible? Yes. Uh, yeah, you just yes. Uh, you need to. Yeah. Let's see if I can make it bigger. That's it. Yeah. So, well, this is. Uh, is is it visible? Yes. All right. Okay. So, well, basically, this is one. This is the table that I got in my room, which is a very luxurious room. I'm gonna show probably some other pictures uh, soon, but they will be around here. So basically, I'm doing some drawings here. This is like the kind of a studio and like little little drawings uh, space. Then this is the this is one of the this is one of the pieces of the studio. These are some paintings that I'm doing there at the moment. I'm getting a lot more colorful compared with the palette that I'm using in London, which is a lot uh, darker. I think it's because the environment is influencing me. It's, so yeah, there, there are like a, a bit of visions as well of the of the sky here and uh, sunny skies mm -hmm. and yeah, clouds and. And yeah, some, I, and some beautiful. And, and are you working on specific series of uh, the works, or uh, like yeah, I'm, I'm, normally I yeah. work in several series. This this is the nephology series, which is basically about the, about gazing at the at the clouds and the uh, mm -hmm. the sky. So, and so all of this involved as well with the language. Yeah. Yeah, Andalusian uh, landscape is present there, you would say. So oh, yeah, the yeah, residence no, really influences you. Yeah, yeah, completely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's getting brighter. It's, it's, getting, mm -hmm. it's getting brighter. So I'm using as well like the um, things that I'm that are around here. Like I, I asked to the to the cleaners for uh, the bed sheets. So I'm using bed sheets as well for in order to make paintings and some other materials. Let's see if I can show anything else. Yeah, uh, so using the local materials as much as you can here. Yeah, this is this is a view of my room as well. So this is great as well in order to see how the paintings look in, uh, in such a different environment rather than the studio. Mm -hmm. This is in the studio. So yeah, it's quite different, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, this is my table there in the in the studio. This yellow painting here, this is the one that I have uh, behind me now. This is the one that I made with the um, with the bed sheets. Also, I don't normally use uh, with uh, such a bright yellows, but I think this is part of well of the weather. So I'm open open to everything. Mm -hmm. in, in, in this case, okay. yeah. This is another yeah. vision of the studio. All these paintings are in process. This is another one that I have here on one of the walls in one room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is such a difference between seeing the paintings here and seeing them in the studio. That's another one. Yeah, seems to be a very productive residency for you. Oh yeah, Having yeah, it is. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm still in process, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying a lot. I'm, during, I'm current. I mean, I like to work in the during the nights because when because living in London, when there is such a beautiful weather here, I feel a bit like uh, we are being in the studio when the when uh, yeah with this when when it's hot. Yeah, and, just and, not to miss out on it, right? Yeah, 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 definitely. 
So they yeah, feel mm-hmm. guilty if I'm if I'm in the studio when it's sunny outside. Yeah. <laughs> so I prefer to work during the night. Uh, and, and what is your creative well. process? Do, do you make some sketches first, or you just you know start working and just see where it leads you in a more experimental kind of manner? Uh, it, do, it depends on the painting because sometimes I use um, sketches, but um, but uh, during the process it changes. That's uh, it's one of the natures of, of painting. If if I follow the sketch, it doesn't work. To be honest, it's like I have to allow the paint um, painting to to speak to me as well during the process. So it's kind. Of, it has to be kind of like an open dialogue. Otherwise, I get bored mm-hmm. as well. If I'm copying, if I'm representing like a sketch, it has to be more like an open open process. Uh, mm-hmm. These are and, some drawings as well. Oh yeah, sorry, yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry, anything? sorry about that. Yeah, let let's let's um, yeah look at more of your beautiful visual materials. So what what are these works? Uh, these are some um, works that I made on paper, which are like um, it's there are works which are between drawing and and painting because they I use graphite in, as a technique. Mm-hmm. So it's something between a uh, drawing and a painting. And I put them here on this wall as well with these beautiful views of the swimming pool, which is the swimming pool that we have outside here. And uh, well, you can see all the views here, the beautiful trees and blue sky. I, I miss so much this blue sky, to be honest. London well, great. there you go. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's exactly the residency where you can get all this inspiration. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, thank, you. thank you. So, thank you so much for, for sharing uh, your experience. And it's really uh, valuable to see right away the illustration mm-hmm. how this residency and Patreon works in real life. Um, so thank you so much. And um, Ah, you have several more images or okay. oh yeah i can okay. show okay. even more yeah it's okay. like uh, i was showing um, should i show more or, or not do, do we have to um i think uh, we got a pretty good overview um, all right okay thank you thank you alan uh thank so you, let Daria. me switch to uh the next uh, speaker and last but not least, I would like to introduce Stella Arion, a London-based artist who is exploring the vulnerability of ceramics, but also some other materials. And she is indeed committed to diving into the wild nature. And I think we will see it pretty clearly uh, when Stella talks about the residences in Chile and Bolivia uh, she has been to. Hi, Stella. Uh, hi, Daria, and thank you so much for introduction. Uh, I think uh, today I would like to cover a few questions because I think, um, firstly, it's such an interesting dialogue that we are having today because it's incredible that we do have a representative of residences and we do have artists, so actually we can discuss this topic from both sides. And uh, me being... Um, artist who is uh, obviously I'm practicing my art every day but also I am working as a mentor and uh, tutor with other artists and I think I would like to start with saying that I do know that not um, every artist is practicing residences and I would like to emphasize that from my perspective it's extremely important to have such experience and I think this is very important because um, Obviously, uh, every time we as artists are making these decisions, we need to understand what is our practice about and what is the main reason why we would love to do these residences. And at the moment, I'm working with um, uh, sculpture and mostly I'm working with uh, ceramics. So um, I do have two residences in my um, record. And first one was in Denmark, in Gulika, that it's an extremely important residency for ceramic artists. So it's ceramic based. And second one that you just mentioned that I just came back from was in Latin America. And it was multimedia artist residency that it's totally different experience. So I think it's extremely important, even if you focus on 
something specific, let's say, as me at the moment. Um, also explore different platforms because um, when I decided to go to this residency in Atacama Desert in Chile, so it's Oasis, it's run by indigenous people. Uh, the name of the residency is uh, La Bayaca Current. And um, it was a big question for me how I'm going to feel because obviously it's not ceramic based. And I found out that it was so brilliant because of course, my main reason why I decided to go there, it was my deep interest and exploration about deep nature, because my main topic um, that I'm working with um, in my creative path at the moment is study um, uh, psychological landscapes and trauma, but I'm studying this topic through reconnection with wild nature and quite unusual places where mostly people don't live. But being in multi, um, multi um, dimensional artist residency in Atacama gave me such an incredible experience to understand how different minds work. So for one month, we had a very deep exchange from someone who would write music or someone who would do certain sketches as animator or architects, uh, me with my uh, digging into sculpture and clay, and so on and so on. So it was quite brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'm actually curious to know, because obviously some artist residency programs, they provide the space for creative process. So you're there and you're creating. Probably in the residences where you have been in uh, Chile and Bolivia, it's more of a research slash inspiration um, mode, right? So does it also work for you? Like maybe you can share some of the insights connected uh, to, to, to this uh, matter with the fellow artists. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for this question. I think it's quite important question actually, because obviously, um, that particular residency, they were very precise um, with introducing themselves because it's quite harsh uh, conditions for living there. Because you would wake, I would wake up at 5 a.m. So, and I would have time from 5 a.m. until 10, maybe 11 a.m. when I can function. And the rest of the day, it would be quite uh, difficult because it would be too hot. And because we were living in huts built by indigenous people, so it would be nothing that we can uh, consider contemporary. So it was really, really basic. And just add on top uh, wind, uh, sand all the time. So we would leave a few minutes walking from a desert. And... Um, it would be a big discussion and interview and a lot of questions that you need to answer. Are you ready for such experiences? And I said, yes, of course, this is exactly what I want to do. I would like to go into this deep research about nature, about culture, about uh, Pachamama that they practice as indigenous, all these rituals, and of course, meeting international artists all over the world. But actually, when I arrived there, I realized that it was such a challenge for my mind and for my body because it was extremely uh, difficult for me and it was also interesting uh, path of self-study how you can stay creative and dig and alter this information and fight with your own body so I think it's quite interesting but the main point is um, to understand what would you like to experience and if you are ready for it or not. But yes, this residency was more about uh, research and gathering mood boards and information. And I would say expanding your mental space through conversations and exchange. Mm -hmm. And do you think that your next artist's residency, it will also go into this direction of the, the wild nature, let's say, or you would like to switch somewhere else? Like, what is this next project um, which can be inspiring? Yeah, because uh, personally, I can afford um, to build my life the way um, I would love to. So I do have time and full dedication for my uh, art pass. Um, I'm planning to have two residences per year, and one residency would be definitely something that is 
quite extreme in terms of almost unattainable places or hard to attain, um, including wild nature um, and something that you cannot experience on everyday basis. And second residency would be connected to university or cultural center like New York or Paris, um, or maybe something uh, with some small villages that are dying, but they're losing their uh, heritage and it can be research about that. And I think it's quite important to combine civilization and non-civilization in one flow. Mm -hmm. Well, great. Thank you, Stella. A lot of uh, luck to you um, with your artistic path and all the re upcoming residency programs. Um, so I would like to share a few more questions to um, our speakers today. So um, this question is addressed to Valeria. So I'm curious to know, um, maybe you can share some examples of how past residences have benefited from the residency program. So, you know, the what was the most impactful moment um, which influenced their creative development? Well, I think uh, uh, there is not only one uh, impactful moment, like with every artist, we have the chance to have different impactful moments. But now I remember, for example, the exhibition that we did with a Japanese artist called Joishi Kamimura. So Joishi is an artist who is based in Japan, who has quite some recognition, let's say, within the country. He has done like a lot of institutional shows, uh, etc. He's working especially with sound installations, so field recording. And of course, when we presented, let's say, like a sound installation at La Boulangerie, it was quite different from the, what the public was expecting. And uh, people were not really understanding it. it. I mean, we had to explain what it was all about, etc. But we were very happy because uh, after the exhibition, we were contacted by an important uh, by Yale, who got curious about Joishi based on this exhibition. And that, of course, opens the door to interesting conversation for our artists. So, for example, that's, that, was a, that was a very special moment. Yes, absolutely. And um, do you also collaborate with some like art institutions in, in, in France and in Paris? Because as you mentioned, you're expanding now and also maybe going to different locations like bakeries as well, uh, who can host uh, the continuation of the projects or um, more, but maybe also with some specific uh, art institutions, if you could share. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, of course, for uh, every time we, we have a show or an artist in residency, we share the portfolio and the work uh, with all of our network. Uh, and within our network, we have a lot of art institutions and we are very happy to see that some museum directors or curators of institutions in France, but as well internationally in Europe, uh, are interested to meeting uh, these artists or to know their practice. Mm -hmm. Well, right now it only seems fair if you expand even um, beyond France because there are, you know, bakeries in beautiful locations all over. Maybe this is the next step, who knows, right? Yes, I yeah. mean, the idea with Offsite is to connect with the local community and actually yeah. with a, a different audience and a different public that doesn't really has this access or this connection to art and is to bring art to unexpected places and to engage in dialogues and to um yes and to connect art with with the public at the end of the day in a very yes. direct and sim simple way mm -hmm, mm -hmm. thank you so much um let me address the next question to lesia um, because we, as we have heard, the artist residency program is still um, just like launched two months uh, ago. And of course, you already mentioned some of your uh, future steps, um, but maybe there are some more possible like collaborations, future collaborations you want to share, like the information with us about. 
Well, you know, actually we go with the flow and initially the idea was just to take the Spanish artists and make them visible for international community. But what we find out is uh, that international community and international artistic community also is very peculiar and particularly about visiting us and staying with us and sharing the experience and dialogue with the local artists. And uh, now we're taking the decision, and actually the decision is already taken, uh, to open the door to international artists as well. Uh, not that we're going to have only international artists, still Spanish culture is going to be our leading communication. Uh, but uh, now we're talking to a very nice uh, artist from Saudi Arabia. Uh, mm -hmm. I met her personally in Jeddah during my trip. And we had a very nice conversation. And I think it's going to be very inspiring to, to bring the dialogue, such an international dialogue, towards our spot and uh, enhance not only cultural exchange between the artists, but also cultural exchange between the guests and the artists. And their techniques, our cultural background, can be mutual, mutually be very interesting, the way they can actually Mm, nurture each other uh, in the creative process. So yeah, we are considering on one spot, open not the door, but maybe a window to the international artists uh, from the markets that visit us as the hotel on one hand. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and on the other hand, of course, talking about not the nearest, but the future, we have the ambition to extend. We have the ambition to extend first in Marbella. Second, some of the hotels got curious about our collaboration with the galleries and the art residences. And uh, we are now brainstorming how we can expand towards other establishment, but already as the only artistic management part not the hospitality yeah. management board. So yeah, we are working these two directions and absolutely excited about both of them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you have a very visionary position and also I like like this very, let's say apart from artistic, also business attitude. So it just it seems to be very, you know, well organized. So that's why I'm I'm also wondering if you you're thinking about like partnering up with some local companies, production companies like who work with specific materials in Spain. Like of course, like right now, Alan mentioned uh, just the you know the batches from the hotel, but of course, like it can it can go to this you know extreme levels. Like I don't know, like some companies producing stone or you know metal, etc. And also, I can imagine you. You have probably a garden uh, space in the in the hotel and some like sculpture garden or land art. So, are you thinking in this direction as well? Absolutely, the sky is the limit here. Well, uh, at the moment we've been approached by uh, recently created uh, art advising on art investment. As it is, once you you are mentioning the business part, I'm 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 coming from the business background and I'm still in the business uh, obviously. So yeah, we uh, started talking to a fund that gives advising on art collecting uh, for those who just don't just collect because they love art but also invest into it. Uh, and uh, on one hand, on the other hand, we do consider both bringing this culture. For that, we need to collaborate with local businesses and local provider who can provide the materials such as marble or maybe other materials uh, sculptures might work with. Because at the moment, our, our residency is mainly in the 2D, but we are thinking about expanding towards 3D. So our gardener gardens also become spaces of exposure of uh, 3D art. And uh, we were also considering just touching and looking around to the digital art mm -hmm. and uh, diving into meta. But this is something that I'm still very cautious about. I would prefer to have uh, the art that you can smell, touch and see on spot, not just visit virtually. OK, wonderful. So lots, lots of plans. Um, yeah, thank you so much, Lisa. Thank you. Um, so I would like to give the floor to Jeff because it's um, like almost the end of our webinar today. 
Thank you so much, Daria, and thank you, everyone. What, what an interesting conversation, and, and I agree. I think it was um, Stella who mentioned it was great to be able to see both sides of the coin, to hear from the residen residencies directly and then the artists themselves. And, and to me, it was so interesting how important the environment is. Um, so clever to build the residences in bakeries and then extend that beyond your own, your own uh, venue to other bakeries. Very, very clever. And um, the hotel and, and the attraction, not only to the artists, but the attraction to the guests to be able to engage with artists. It's a really very interesting and potentially powerful combination. And the environment is so important, as, as, as Alan pointed out. You know, in London, I don't think he would have done uh, artwork on bed sheets, but in a hotel, of course, bed sheets are such an integral part of the hotel experience and the way the weather influences color choices and palette was fascinating. And I think that um, Stella's desire to find residencies in unusual, hard to get to locations to inspire her art was, was really, really interesting. So this was a really great conversation. So thank you to everyone who participated. And of course, thank you to everyone who's here watching. The recording of today's webinar will be available on our YouTube channel. So please subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay uh, in touch with this and other webinars. Um, next month, in honor of International Women's Day, our, our Meet the Dot Artist webinar next month will focus on women in the arts. Um, so you won't see me next month. <laughs> but um, we're looking forward to another great webinar. And that'll be on March 26th. So stay tuned for more information about that. Uh, and remember, you can get your own dot art domain at www.get.art. And if you use the code on the screen below, uh, Art Webinar, you can get a 50% discount on your own dot art domain. Uh, so again, thank you so much for joining us for this month's Meet the Dot Artist webinar. This was really, uh, really fascinating and interesting and exciting. And I hope you got a lot out of it, as I certainly did. Thank you, everyone. We hope to see you again soon.